you're dead to me, literally. Family reunions and also stop in the name of love. Season one, episode 12 of Charmed, review and breakdown. Hey y'all, it's your Twisted Girl Next Door here and today I am doing a review and breakdown of season one, episode 12 of Charmed on the CW. Okay, so if you're new here, this is how it goes. I do my overall thoughts of the episode, the happenings, as in what happened in the episode, ship talk because I love talking about relationships, my favorite line of the episode, predictions because, well, I like to guess even if I'm going to be wrong. Oh my gosh, we finally got more into Macy's powers. I had been saying from Jump, I would want to see if Macy could explore how powerful she actually is because I got tired of her just kind of moving stuff with her brain, usually like plates and things, and then getting knocked out for like most of the episode while the other two sisters kind of got to save the day until they did Power of Three. So this episode was really good in terms of the development of Macy understanding her power and perhaps her future. And also it was really great because we got more of a focus on the core four when it came to where they're going and their bonds, right? And by core four, I mean the three sisters and of course, Harry, because that's the core four of this episode. And I think for the past couple of episodes, we've had the core four sort of leaning on other people as opposed to each other when it came to their problems and their issues. And I think this episode really just drove home how much cooler it is when we get to focus on the core four and them sort of kind of solving issues on their own and together in various ways. Macy. So what we got in this episode is that Macy has demon blood in her. We found out why she couldn't be around her mother, which was really sad, the sacrifice that her mom or their mom made in terms of making it so that Macy was able to live. And then finally, Macy made a deal with the devil, not literally the devil, but basically Parker's mother in terms of getting the demon blood out of her. I really like this A plot line when it came to this episode. I am one of those people where I think Macy, I kind of sense that Macy had a lot of power in her and maybe it was purposeful that the show creators and the writers made it so we kind of waited to see what she could actually do. I enjoyed the uh, Necromaster. I'm totally, I totally just butchered that name when it came to Nacro Master. You know what I'm talking about, Nancy. I liked Nancy. I liked uh, the woman who brought her back to life. She was funny. It was also kind of like a, you know, red herring in the sense that we sort of believed her in most of the episode. And then it turned out that she was somewhat evil. Although I'm a little bit on the line of she was completely evil necessarily when it came to what she was doing. I mean, she gave people what they wanted it was just through kind of very dark forces does that make her inherently evil i mean these people knew the risk that if you bring back this person okay maybe they didn't know this idea that they, she was using demon blood but they knew she was using the dark arts so the fact that sid the woman the witch that was after nancy for most of the episode was so mad that she had to vanquish her husband it was like well you fought your husband back from the dead in the first place I mean, you were already going against nature. You sort of knew the consequences. Why do you want to kill Nancy? I mean, I guess she could have been more upfront in telling you, hey, I use demon blood, so there's a chance he might turn into a demon. But let's be real. Would you have said no? So when Nancy was killed, I kind of felt like, well, she didn't really, I mean, she kind of died by her own hands, but it was also kind of like, did she deserve to die by her own hands? I don't know. I, I was a little bit on the fence with that. I did appreciate the kind of talk that she had with Macy when it came to her saying, you don't know the power that you have, do you? And I don't think Macy being able to stop people's hearts with her mind is a dark force, right? It just shows the level of power her telepathy, her telekinesis can do, right? And I have been waiting for this. I'm like, you know, maybe because I've watched enough fantasy shows and movies and stuff to know, I'm like, she can move stuff with her mind. That doesn't just need to be like outside objects. You could literally probably pull someone's heart from their chest if you wanted to, right? Someone's spleen from their body. You could do some real powerful stuff, and especially if you had enough force in your mind, you could probably move a whole friggin' truck. These are things that Macy is capable of doing and I don't think that's in connection to her demon side necessarily it's just like if she was a super powerful witch 
and she got to hone that kind of power, this is the things we would see. And we got glimpses of that. And I was really happy for that because I was, if you remember from some of my previous reviews and breakdowns, is that I was a little worried that once we found out that Maggie and Macy were full sisters, that Maggie's plot line would somehow meld with Macy's when it came to the whole dark force thing that we saw with Macy. And I liked how, even though they made them full sisters, they made it so that Macy's plot line of being having demon in her is her own because i do appreciate that macy is getting to have her own sort of plot line and it works really well her having to kind of fight this power inside of her this darkness i think it's going to be really fun when it comes to seeing macy and the wonderful actress that portrays macy having to deal with that and so it's it was a lot to take and it was great to see macy kind of go through that and her sisters being there for her and harry being there for her as well and so i really appreciate this plot line and i think it was a time to finally see a little bit more of the layers outside of galvin which i'll get to when i come to my ship talk in terms of macy being able to stand on her own when it comes to this magical world that she's found herself a part of do i agree with her making a deal with parker's mom not necessarily i see that you know macy is really fearful that she may turn into full demon because of the way she was brought back so there's a little bit of a worry in that. But I think what we're seeing, even with Parker, that it's not necessarily that demons can be inherently bad, right? Are demons inherently bad? Like, what's that about? I mean, I think we have to kind of explore that maybe. Like, just because they have to be a demon, as in their power comes from a different source than witchcraft, are they inherently evil? And I think, you know, at this moment, she's like, no, I need to get rid of it because it's going to turn me evil and I'm going to want to do evil things. But I think it would be really smart if the show kind of explores this idea that demons aren't inherently evil and it's just a different kind of power source that they have that has been labeled dark. And so I think I hope they kind of go that route. But if they don't, I think we're going to have a little bit more of Macy kind of kind of hating a part of herself, which is kind of sad. So I hope that we work through this. But at the moment, she's making a deal with Parker's mom. So who knows what that's going to entail. Harry. So what we have been getting up to this point, that Harry's loyalty was somewhat divided. Not even his loyalty. It was more so his mind was very much focused on his past life. And because of that, it physically inhibited his powers, right? It physically made it so that he could not fully do what he needed to do as a white lighter. Not just, I think, for the girls, but in, in general, because he was somewhat attached to his previous life that he got to be knowledgeable of, right? So what we saw in this episode is that his powers were dysfunctioning, but now they're back because his loyalty has been fully restored. Or not even, like I said, I'm not even wanting to use the word loyalty. I feel like his focus has been fully restored. And we see that he is definitely going to be staying with the girls for the foreseeable future to be their white lighter. And he got to see his kid, Carter, which was very sweet. And he got to see his great grandchildren or yeah, his great grandchildren, which was a very sweet moment. And Mel got to help him do that. I think this was a good tie up to this plot line. I I was fine with the fact that Harry had kind of discovered an aspect of himself. I think that was a really cool plot device. I just did worry that it might get drawn out for too long. This whole, my focus is too much and I can't give you girls what you need. I mean, it was like, how long are they going to keep doing that? So I liked that they kind of tied this up in this episode. It was emotional. It worked. He got to see his son, which was a very beautiful moment. And he got to realize being with the girls is where he needed to be when it comes to his purpose at this juncture. And I, I'm also happy that he got to go through this with one of the girls when it comes to, I would prefer to be, you know, Macy, but she was going on with her own stuff at this particular episode. But it was nice that it was one of the girls because it also shows the strength of all of their bonds because he actually did call all three even though Mel was the one that was able to answer because Maggie and Macy were tied up at the moment. And so it was nice that they got to go through that together and it just goes to show their bond and I'm very happy that Harry is back to being focused on the girls. Lucy. Oh my gosh, Lucy. This was kind of a bonus plot line that they kind of slipped in between the episode. Like once you think about what happened in the episode, this plot line was totally going on. We just didn't realize it was happening. But we found out that Lucy is being controlled by Parker's dad, who is in the Bahamas or something somewhere at the moment, basically making it so that Lucy is trying to get Maggie to fall back in love with Parker. 
Although we know Maggie never really fell out of love with Parker, but I'll talk about that in my ship talk. But it was like, whoa, where did this come from? First of all, Lucy is one of my favorite characters, and it's kind of a little bit plot devicey. I know that's not a word. I'm going to use it. That they keep making it so that her character is the one that gets controlled by these things to get the plot going. I mean, I love it. I love that she gets, you know, the airtime because I really like the character of Lucy as Maggie's friend. But this is like the third time they've done this, right, where she's being used you know, and also it's like, okay, this is the third time. I feel like after this time, hopefully they'll be able to free her from the mind control, that they need to let Lucy know what's going on. I mean, if Galvin is allowed to know what the heck is going on with the girls, you need to let Lucy know what's going on with you all. Cause she's like Maggie's best friend, like pretty much her only friend there who's not her sister. And it's like, this stuff keeps happening to Lucy. She's the one that needs to be made aware. I just want some protection for one of my fave characters. Is that too much to ask? Mel and Nico. Okay, so I felt like, okay, I guess I was wrong because in the last episode, I pretty much said I felt like Mel was pretty much over Nico because she didn't seem to be concerned with her romantically, just more so like, why is she here? And in this episode, the only reason she seemed to give for not getting back with Nico was because, you know, Nico will be in danger. And the minute that Mel said that, I was like, and maybe also because you're seeing Jada. So I still think that's going to come to a head. But what we got from this episode is that Mel still has feelings for Nico. Macy and Harry. Yeah, I know there wasn't anything romantic overtly, but I'm going to talk about them anyway because I shipped them. Oh, yeah. Hacy for the win. So, you know, I thought it was really cool that they had it so that Harry went and talked to Macy about how they kind of shared the same thing about being brought back to life. Harry in a different sort of way as a white lighter, but they're both having this thing in common where they were dead at one time and they got a second chance at life. In Harry's case, it was more so with like good magic and with Macy Case's dark magic and whole lot of ramifications. But I really appreciated that they allowed Harry and Macy to have that bonding moment. And I totally peeped that knee touch that Harry gave Macy. I dug it. I dug it a lot. And I just hope that we get more moments with these characters because I think they have the potential for great chemistry and also just an awesome plot line. Could you imagine a white lighter with a half witch one-fifth or maybe one-fifteenth demon? Like, it writes itself. This is a great plot line. Follow it, writers. Maggie and Parker. I think Maggie and Parker are really sweet. And for one, can I go to a traffic light party? That just seemed like a very ingenious kind of party to go to. You know, wear red if you're in a relationship, green if you're ready. I don't, like, what is yellow? Is yellow, like, uh, it's complicated equivalent on Facebook? I don't know. So it seemed, it was such a cute party idea. And so they, you know, were there. And I, you know, it's one of these things. I did kind of laugh when Parker was like, you know, can you ever forgive me? I didn't mean to do it. Like as though he like kissed another girl and wasn't like a half demon trying to kill Maggie and her sisters. And I was like, hmm, it's, you know, y'all kind of acting like this is normal because it's not. But at this point, it's kind of normal for them, right? So it was very interesting. We see that Maggie definitely still has feelings for Parker to the point where she really can't seem to like another guy at this juncture because the wound is still fresh in her love for him. And I think they're going to get back together. And I think it's great that Parker is very much trying to be there for Maggie. I do wonder about his health situation now that all of that is going on. Is he still dying? I We kind of know he might still be dying because Macy going to Parker's mother, who's still trying to find a cure for Parker. So, but that didn't come into play. He wasn't coughing or anything this episode. And then I just kind of have a quick note when it comes to the ships and who was kind of paired off and allowed to be paired off when it came to this episode. And like I said earlier, definitely about the core four, but I thought it was very telling with Macy and Harry separately in the situation that Macy didn't go to Galvin. Galvin was not someone that she went to because she was leaning on him in some of these episodes, like when she had outs with her sisters and everything like that. And in this episode, she didn't go to him. She didn't tell him anything. And it was the same thing with Harry. Like Harry could have called Charity to help him, you know, go track down his his son and whatnot. Maybe she would have helped him. Maybe she wouldn't have. But he could have reached out to her and they could have showed that just like they could have showed Macy reaching out to Galvin. And I thought it was very pointed that they didn't. 
Kind of the same thing with why they didn't have Mel have any scene with Jada, which gives me pause about where they're putting in terms of importance when it comes to those those three ships, you know, Macy and Galvin, Harry and Charity, that name, <laughs> Mel and Jada. So maybe this was kind of a signal of those ships aren't as heavy as we might think they are and that these characters are learning to kind of stand on their own a bit more away from those ships that was just something i sort of noticed when those in power repeat lies long enough people start to believe them rest in peace nancy the only prediction i have is that i think macy's going to have to come to a point where she accepts her demoness that's not a word either, but she's going to have to accept that she has demon blood in her. And that, I think it's going to make some really cool plot lines, like maybe having to explore who she might be connected to, whose blood is in her, right? Which demon did she make a deal with? Did Nancy make a deal with that now that blood flows through Macy, right? Like, who is this person? There's so many plot lines if she accepts her demon side that I think we're going to have to get to the point where she's going to have to. I don't think that she's going to succeed in getting the demon out of her. I just don't, because there's too much potential of plot lines for it. So what did you think of episode 12, season one of Charmed? Let me know. Do you think Maggie and Parker are going to get back together? Do you think this is the start of something with Harry and Macy? Do you think Macy's going to eventually have to accept her demon side? And so many other plot lines that you should let me know what you think. Comment down below. Let me know. And also be sure to subscribe so that you're the first to know when I post my videos of all things horror and dark fantasy. Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together.